Mathematical complexity muddies the waters. ML approaches are not new in intrinsic value investing, and every finance student can appreciate the proto-ML method of least squares to fit a line. Surprisingly, the creator of least squares, the famed polymath Carl Friedrich Gauss, used a technique that an intrinsic investor would appreciate to get at the truth of the data. Gauss's famously used least squares estimation when he located the asteroid series, which had been lost in its transit across the sun. Competing against a field of astronomers, Gauss combined least squares regression in a 100-hour iterative triangulation procedure to minimize and control error. Intrinsic value investing is a time-honored discipline to evaluate prices based on the true value of a company, taking into account both qualitative and quantitative factors. Thus, like value investors, Gauss took simple methods applied in a principled fashion to achieve remarkable results. For his achievement, Gauss received the directorship of the Göttingen Observatory. The limitations of linear regression in dealing with the complex and noisy nature of financial markets led to the development of more advanced techniques. Stochastic calculus emerged as a crucial tool for modeling and understanding the dynamics of financial markets. Stochastic calculus has roots in natural study. In 1827, the botanist Robert Brown observed the random deflection of pollen in water under the influence of no visible agent. The quantitative physical explanation of Brownian motion formed one leg of Albert Einstein's Annus Mirabilis, Miracle Year, in 1905, for which he won the Nobel Prize in Physics, the other legs being explanations of the photoelectric effect and special relativity. Related to Gauss's idea that deviations are regularly distributed, one of the key concepts in stochastic calculus is the idea of a stochastic process. A stochastic process is a collection of variables with probabilities that represent the evolution of a system over time. The three economists Fisher Black, Myron Scholes, and Robert Merton used geometric Brownian motion, GBM, in their Black-Scholes-Merton model for pricing European options. The GBM models the logarithmic return of a stock price as a Gaussian variable, thereby capturing the random walk behavior often observed in the underlying asset. We all learn the area under the curve approach to calculus, but what if the curve represents singular events? The essential mathematical tool used in the study of these stochastic processes is Ito's calculus, named after the Japanese mathematician Kiyoshi Ito. Ito's lemma, a key result of Ito's calculus, provides a method to find the differential of a function of a stochastic process. In essence, it helps us understand how a financial derivative which is a function of the underlying asset price, will change as the asset price changes. However, stochastic calculus is not without its challenges. Its real-world assumptions often diverge from actual market behavior. For instance, markets can jump and often shift distributions at the same time. Volatility, instead of being constant as often assumed in GBM, changes over time. To counteract these issues, more sophisticated models have been developed, like the jump diffusion model and the stochastic volatility model. Unfortunately, academic flourish does not imply practical usability. Author Nassim Taleb hammered on the topic of ill-assumed priors for tail risk. Even further European options, as you might deduce, aren't the contracts used in U.S. markets, where the freedom or danger of early exercise is ever present. While providing the mathematical foundation to quantify and sum the random movements observed in markets, stochastic calculus led many practitioners into a morass of calculation. Applied stochastic calculus reached the heights of hubris captured by the story of long-term capital management, LTCM, depicted in When Genius Failed. Roger Lowenstein's book emphasizes the human tendency of incorrect assumptions. Eventually, the mathematical community recoiled from baked-in assumptions in their modeling. The next wave of models attempted to tackle tail risk, using at least the observation that manias and panics manifested as tightly correlated behavior. These models, such as autoregressive integrated moving average, ARIMA, and generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, GARCH, provided more accuracy by handling clustered occurrences of volatility, but still had limitations in dealing with the complexities of financial markets and needless to say, did not have a deeper understanding of the causal drivers of business performance. In terms of straightforward and effective calculation, 
Economist William Sharp's contributions had the insight to endure, being no more complex than required. His Nobel Prize-winning work connected time series volatility with risk. This made him a forefather to both the application of economics to market dynamics and risk estimation. His work laid the foundations for the capital asset pricing model, CAPEM, which is discussed in Chapter 3. With the advent of powerful computing and continued ML development, useful methods with intelligence emerged. NNs and decision trees allowed for the creation of sophisticated models that could better handle the branching complexity of financial markets. Decision trees, especially ones boosted by parallel processing such as gradient-boosted trees, XGBoost, allowed rapid optimal combination of factors. NNs, while heralded as universal function approximations, required complex architecture to move from theoretical to practical performance. What girded ML development was the wisdom that with pure mathematical techniques, it was to paraphrase Richard Feynman, too easy to fool oneself. In ML, the marriage of statistics with data-centric computer science found common cause on the basis of not fooling oneself, as discussed in Chapter 2. The failure of Arima and Garch to conquer markets draws out a deeper connection of ML competition with investing. Like investors and businesses ever improving, ML competitions are never the same. A survey of recent ML competitions shows superficially patternless results. A specialized technique, fractional max pooling, won a diabetic retinopathy image competition, many-fold ensembling won a chest x-ray competition, and auxiliary segmentation, pixel labeling models hoisted the champions in a cardiac ejection fraction competition. The innovation that powers each win is intimately intertwined with the secret dependencies of the data. In the case of diabetic retinopathy, fractional max pooling, which varies the view across pixels, finds small lesions on a high-resolution image. Manifold Ensembling, Sec 9.4, benefits the chest X-ray domain because chest X-rays draw from such a diverse source of possibilities. There are over 20 diseases that can occur in the chest, from physical pneumothorax, bacterial infections, viral pneumonia, etc. Auxiliary segmentation provided the physical volume estimation required in a robust estimate of ejection fraction. Past performance doesn't guarantee future performance because the present is an ever-improving rhyme. In subsequent chapters, we discuss the rhymes that generate effective methods. As it turns out, rhymes are usually intrinsic in nature. In the Tao of Munger, David Clark writes, Charlie is a man who can discuss Charles Darwin's thoughts on evolution, Stephen Jay Gould's thoughts on Darwin's thoughts, Albert Einstein's unified field theory, Walter Bagehot's 1873 treatise on central banking, Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz's development of calculus, Marcia Stigham's voluminous work on the money market, Marquis and Jesse R. James's history of the Bank of America, the conflict between Robert Oppenheimer and Edward Teller over the development of the hydrogen bomb, and E.O. Wilson's theories of sociobiology all in the same breath. He can even quote Mark Twain and Immanuel Kant when the occasion calls for it. We get the sense that Munger invests so he can have more time to read rather than reading to invest. Yet reading at the very least enables the reader to multiply experience and live many lives. In ML, we'll cover the concept of unrepresentative or partial experience. Overfitting, where a model becomes specialized to the training experiences, ultimately leads to poor generalization and reduced performance on new, unseen experiences. To address this issue, the core ML strategies of regularization, cross-validation, and ensemble methods have developed to improve model generalization and prevent overfitting, Chapter 2. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Truth Engine, Applying AI to Investing, written by Leonidas Tam, Ph.D., and narrated by Onyx from OpenAI. For more content like this, please navigate to amicasa.substack.com and selected figures are available at amicasa.substack.com slash pfigs-truthengine. If you enjoyed the book, please consider leaving your review.